Ecosystems placed with a global environment are only limited by their rules of nature. Ecosystems can also be attached to vectors which define their aerial extent and give them priority over environments. Use the zoom box in the planimetric view to zoom in on the widening of the canyon east of the main camera. Undock and drag the view out to give us a larger view to draw on. Render a preview. The render illustrates the challenge of ecotype dissolved textures. What looks good from one camera view doesn't necessarily look good from another. Go to the land cover task mode, disable the dissolve color texture, and open the color editor. The grassland fill light is adding intensity to the ecosystem, so reduce this intensity to 50%. Keep the color, save the project, and render a preview. Select the pine burn ecosystem in the scene at a glance and create. Confirm that you are creating a vector for the existing ecosystem, pine burn. Left click a couple of vertices around this raised area. You won't see the vector on the render, but if you want to check your progress, key F8 to switch to a real-time view and select Yes to retain diagnostic data. This will save the RGB render and other channels in memory. Continue digitizing here if you'd like, or F8 back to the render. Digitizing on a render gives you more scene detail and more precise vertex placement. Right-click or escape on a Mac when you're done and name the vector Forest. Confirm that you want to add the vector to the Pine Burn ecosystem. Save the project and render a preview. The Pine Burn ecosystem has rendered but not quite within the vector we digitized. The outline is blocky and if we use the Measure Distance tool, we'll find that the length of those blocks is about 90 meters. Bring the Pine Burn Ecosystem Editor forward and go to the general page. Our vector bounded ecosystem is rendering in 90 meter blocks because that's its resolution. Reset the resolution to match the underlying dim by unchecking and checking the floating box. Save the project and render a preview. Dock the planimetric view when you're done. A foliage effect is used to place individual foliage objects. Select the foliage effect in the scene at a glance and create. The create window will confirm that we're creating a new foliage effect with an attached vector. Go to the mouse page, select connect and change the point space to 10 meters. You can't see it now, but there used to be an old cabin here that's been long since broken up for firewood. All that's left are the snags of trees planted around the cabin as a windbreak. Switch to a real-time plan view and zoom box in on the area directly in front of the main camera. Open the planimetric view preferences to the overlay gradient page and enable the ecosystem map. Left click four corners of a quadrangle along the north canyon wall and right click or escape to finish. Name it tree break, add the vector to the foliage effect, and close out the component gallery when it opens. Change the absolute height to foliage group. Go to the groups page, add foliage group, and name it anything. Load foliage group, and select the pine snags component we created earlier. Bring the grassland ecotype editor forward and enable the dissolve color texture. Save the project and render a preview. Switch the main camera back to a real-time view and retain the diagnostic data. We'll use it in a moment. By default, real-time foliage preview is enabled for foliage effects. Because of the possible resource load involved, it's not recommended that you enable ecosystem real-time foliage without first changing the preferences. Open the pop-up menu and select Real-Time Options, Land Cover, Real-Time Foliage File Preferences, or use the forward slash keyboard shortcut. 
move the diagnostic data and view real-time preferences window so we can see both them and our main camera view. Find the distance to the right ridge, about here. According to the diagnostic data, it's about 600 meters away. Change the file display far distance criteria to 600 meters and the minimum height criteria to 5 meters. Close the window, open the main pop-up menu, and select Real-Time Options, Create Real-Time Foliage File. WCS will render a preview to generate the foliage file. When it's finished, open the pop-up menu again and uncheck Show Preview. Open the main pop-up menu and select Real-Time Options, Load Real-Time Foliage File. Edit Views Camera to open the main camera editor, which will set an undo point. Go to Manipulate Camera Move Mode and move the camera forward. The view response to mouse movement will be sluggish, but should be acceptable. Real-time foliage is very handy for knowing where the trees are going to be so you don't render right in front of one. When you're done moving the camera, undo all changes in the camera editor to undo your camera moves since the editor was opened. Open the main view pop-up menu and select real-time options, load real-time foliage file to unload the foliage file. Save the project and render a preview. The last category in the land cover task mode is snow. Double click the category to create a new one called snow. Snow has a rules page just like ecosystems. The big difference is that the elevation line is the lower limit of its coverage, not the upper. Change the elevation line to 2065 meters and render a preview. Snow covers ecosystems and ground effects just like it does in the real world but not foliage objects. If you want snow on your trees, you'll need foliage objects that already have snow on them.